Hey, what is going on guys? This is Coded Steel and I'm returning after a very long pause from doing uh, App Inventor tutorials. This one um, is another viewer request. Someone asked uh, me to take and kind of show how to recreate this test more or less was the um, um, request that I got. So this is a depression test that uh, somebody found on the internet and it's got 10 questions and I was just asked can you is there a way that you can turn this test can you show us how uh, the, what the blocks would be that you could turn this test into a um, um, into an app basically and I had said responded back yes I can show someone how to or show you guys how to do that or how to uh, create a test to do this um, we have to use a new extension actually which I know I showed you guys a video about extensions before but here's a link here which I will post to my page which takes you to a bunch of different extensions um, that you can use for um, mod making modifications to your app the one that we used here was the radio buttons extension um, and rather than post the AIX file to my Google Drive like I normally do I'll post the app to my Google Drive um, if somebody has a request about me emailing it directly to them, I can email it. I know some of you guys are like using .edu um, ad, uh, email addresses and you're not able to, your, your server blocks it, uh, blocks me sending stuff to you, blocks Gmail access and uh, for, with files and then blocks Google Drive downloads. So I know it can make it difficult sometimes to get you guys files, but um, I will give you a brief walkthrough of how um, I built the app and etc. So, um, anyways, let's uh, after you download, which you can download it just by clicking on it. You'll download the radio buttons component, and then when you go to start a new project, I'm just going to call this radio buttons, um, and we will open a new. Let me change my view here. There we go. Radio buttons. Um, uh, to app here. So what you have to do to you make use of the radio buttons feature, we first have to import the extension. So we just go down here to extensions, import the extension, choose a file from my computer, and then go to your download section and find the radio buttons component. There it is, or radio buttons extension. There it is. Import it. And just like that, it is going to be imported in. There it is and then I can drag it into the window and it appears as a non-visible component and uh, I'll explain why that is in a second or why they did that that way it's kind of weird um, I assume you could have made it a visible component but um, they chose not to and uh, the number of radio buttons is configurable so maybe this was the best way for them to do uh, um, the person who created this to do the extension to do it but in order to make use of the, um, the radio buttons extension we have to first drag in the vertical arrangement and the reason why we have to do that is I'll show you here in just a second and I think we're also going to just probably drag in a button or something I don't know so this is just gonna be a simple demonstration and then I'm going to show you guys my app um, that I built so when the screens uh, what we're gonna do is when the screens initialized we're gonna do something with the radio buttons we're gonna create the radio buttons um, the container is going to be the vertical arrangement. So that's that. ID can be anything. Um, it's an, any number, really. I'm just going to make it one in this case. And they do that because, um, obviously, you could put multiple radio buttons in here, and you could assign them each different ID numbers. You want to assign them each different ID numbers so they each have different um, or are categorized differently or in, 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 you know, separate from each other. Um, and then the orientation, um, you have to fill up all of these. Um, I know it's kind of weird because here it makes it look like you can populate some of this stuff by default, but you actually have to populate everything in these, uh, um, these uh, what do you call them, um, variables or whatever, the inputs to the, to the method, basically. These are the inputs to the method. So I have to type in vertical because I want them to appear vertically. I could also type in horizontal and make them appear horizontally. Uh, but I, in this instance, we're using a vertical arrangement, so we're going to have vertical. 
Um, list of items. There's a couple different ways you can do this. If you guys know lists, you can do um, you can do make a list or you can do CSV comma separated whatever to a list or where's that list to CSV row. So you just you know go comma 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 comma. Um, I am going to do it the standard way, just making a list. And um, my list is going to be very simple. It's just going to be four things. And it's going to be very simple. So it's just going to be A, B, C, and D, basically. So that's what I'm going to do. A and B and C and D. Done. All right. And just like that, we have um, basically made it to where we can do our radio buttons. So um, one other thing we're going to do, we have this button here. When I click the button, we're actually going to go back to this page. And I'm going to just kind of show you guys um, how this all works more or less. When you click the button, you can get the checked, basically, um, what's checked with the box and kind of populate a variable with or with that, or in this case, I'm gonna make it appear in the actual text box. So I'm gonna set the text box dot text, come on, to call radio buttons dot get check. So basically that's gonna get whatever the text is for the check box. So very simple to use, um, uh, more or less. There's uh, another thing where you can actually check something so for this one, you would actually have to put this in here, and I could say um, I'll I'll do this for I guess the long click. I'll show you guys how this. When we do the long click version of it, we're gonna set the selected. That's gonna be the ID of one here. Uh, okay. The RB text is gonna be we're gonna check C. And then checked is just whether you want it to be checked or not checked. So basically you can check it or uncheck it. Checked, we want to set to true because we want to check it basically. So I'm going to build this, show you guys just this quick example. And then after this, I'm going to show you the test that I built and then um, how that was built. So let's download this application to my computer once or my phone, I should say. And I will show you guys this as an example. Should hopefully load up here just a second. Do, do, do. Come on. It's nice that when I make apps or make simple things like this on the fly, but unfortunately, um, you know, sometimes you're kind of at the mercy of the speed of the compiler that's compiling the app. And, and you know, I got to download it to the phone. And there we go. All right. And it's installing right now. And I will show you guys what it looks like on my actual phone here when I pull up the Team Viewer app. So, all right. Let's get this going. This always usually crashes my computer, so I'm always a little reluctant to, uh, you know, open this up, but I don't really have a choice. So, okay, radio buttons app, loading it up. So here's what it looks like, guys. You can kind of see um, I can tap A and then hit the button, and you see it shows up with A in the box. Tap D, shows up with D in the box. If I hold it down, it's going to automatically check C for us. And then if I push it once, if I do it again, it automatically selects C. So you guys can kind of see, um, you can choose to have the software automatically do that for you, or not automatically. You know, you can do it manually by yourself, by checking it. So... Very simple component to use. You can make the text however long you want. Notice that when it returns the check status, it returns the text of the radio button. So if I put a whole phrase in here, um, if I was going to check for it with an if statement, which is what we're going to do for our test, I have to put that whole text string as it appears next to the actual radio button. So very simple to use. 
Um, now that you guys know how that works, we're going to terminate that connection so I don't crash my, uh, okay, we're doing pretty good on time. We're going to quick go through um, the actual application I built that um, was this depression test. So I'm going to go back to my projects, and it's this multiple choice test is what I called it. So we'll quick go through this really fast, how this is built. So you guys can see I basically took these exact questions and that's what I put in the actual application. So um, screen one initialization. So if you look at the designer, I put the, I use labels and I just put the labels for the actual 10 questions and went all the way down, put a vertical arrangement on each one after each one. And then at the bottom, put a submit button to submit all the answers when you're done. Um, so very simple. Um, and once that's all done, I came in here and I did the screen one initialize and I initialized uh, 10 radio buttons. So you guys see how I did that here. I actually had to drag the radio buttons in 10 times to create 10 different sets of radio buttons um, and then made the app scrollable so you could scroll through the questions to answer them. So once that was done, um, I basically it was a lot of copying and pasting. So took the radio buttons widget, copied it 10 times. The answers are all pretty much, everything's pretty much all the same. I changed the ID to increment that. You guys can see all that stuff here. Um, we went through, and then the last question had different answers, so I had to um, set those answers up. And that pretty much takes care of everything for organizing the questions. Now we have to have a way to totalize them. So um, this PDF here that was attached to the test has a score. Basically, um, you know, it tells you how you get a zero and how you score a three on each question. Um, basically, A is always zero, uh, B, C, and D, you know, the points totals go up. And then this is your score. Depending on where you're at, um, where you fall in numerically, that will determine what whether you have minimal depression, mild depression, moderate depression, so on, to severe depression. So to do that, I had to come up with an algorithm to basically add the results of each question up. So how did I do that part? That's the part we need to dig into next. So first off, um, I wanted to make it to where the uh, app would not allow you to hit the submit button before all the questions are answered. So to do that, when nothing's checked on the radio buttons, it will return negative one. Don't believe me, you can try it yourself um, on the application. Don't check any boxes and then create an app that uses just a simple push button, push the button and see what text it returns in the text box. It should return negative one when nothing's checked. So basically that's a test to see if anything's, if um, there's still a question that hasn't been answered. If there is a question that hasn't been answered, this will catch it, and what it will do is it will display a notifier down here. Um, essentially, it will, oh, hang on. Uh, letting this thing kind of move around a little bit on me. But if all the questions aren't answered, it'll go down here and spring this notifier, notifier and say you must answer all questions, error, and cancel. Um, and then, uh, we'll get back to this stuff in a second. But essentially, what you have to do now, or what we have to do now, is we have to have a way to totalize them. How do we do that part of it? That's where this block comes in. It's basically this app is a lot of copying and pasting. It's not really that complicated, but we're going to expand it out so you guys can kind of see what's going on. So basically, it's just a bunch of if else blocks. And I'm sure there's a way this could be optimized. Somebody I'm sure could come up with a better way to do this or could tell me I, I, or could come up with a better way to do this um, than I did. I just, like I told you guys before, I am not looking for the most optimized code when I build these tutorials. I'm just looking for come up with a solution, show you guys how to do it. And then from there, um, if I was going to produce my own app, I would go through and optimize it. But in this case, I just wanted there to be an answer as quick as possible. So what I did is I just checked to see if the radio button was checked for not at all, several days, more than half the days, nearby, nearly every day. And then I assigned a value, zero, one, two, or three to each one of those questions. And then add that to a, a, a global depression counter. 
Did that for each set of questions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way through to 10. And obviously the, the tenth one, the questions are different. So I couldn't really copy and paste that. I had to do not difficult, somewhat difficult, blah, blah, blah. Extremely difficult. Um, so once that procedure was created, then in once the button is clicked to submit the test, it calls that function. So it'll totalize all the look at all the answers, totalize them up. And then depending on which range you fall in, it's going to produce this result, this result, this result, this result, this result, or this result. So there's five choices. There's you can be not depressed at all, you're minimally, mildly, moderately, and then moderately, severely, and then severely. So pretty simple. Um, I will show you guys a demonstration of how this works. And as always, I will make this uh, code available to you guys on my Google Drive. It will get posted on there. I will put a link to it um, in the video description and you guys will be able to access it yourself. So let's connect to our app or uh, um, our phone again here. Do, do, do. Okay. Connect to the partner. It's connecting to my phone again. All right, now I will show you guys this thing in action. Very simple. Um, so you can easily see if I hit the submit button, it's gonna say error, you must answer all questions. That will come up if you leave any one of these questions blank and that was that block that I showed you guys before where it actually is designed to catch that stuff. Where was that? That was the all questions answered block. Wherever the heck I put that, it's probably off in the margin somewhere. Oh. Yeah, that's not what I want to do. It's somewhere around here. Um, still, ex it still exists somewhere around here. Anyways, though that there, there, yeah, there it is. So, anyways, or all questions answered. That's over here. What am I saying? Okay, anyways, it's there. You see it. Um, and uh, so that'll catch it. Then now we can go through. We'll answer this. I'm gonna come up, I'm just gonna randomly go through and select these and then it will assign me a uh, value depending on where it thinks I'm at. I don't know. Um, obviously you'd be answering these questions honestly if you're trying to get an honest answer, but it says I am moderately depressed. So when I take the test again, I can go back through and I can select different answers. So I'm gonna select everything, the max now, and I should get obviously severe Depression. I don't have to have all of them checked this way to get severe depression, but I have to have most of them. So, all right, I should get it. There you go. I was classified with severe depression. So, anyways, that is basically it. Um, very simple and easy to use, or, uh, use component. You guys could use this to build like math tests, history tests, whatever kind of test you wanted. Essentially, you could create your own kind of test app and use the random components to generate random questions depending on when somebody opened the app and all kinds of things you could do. So uh, very easy component to use. If you have any questions about using it, you always know you guys can send me an email um, and I will respond back and maybe try to give you guys some pointers uh, to get you headed in the right direction. And um, if you have any other you know, comments or suggestions, Feel free to leave a comment below in the video or in the comment section. So uh, I think that's it. Um, thanks, guys, for being very patient with me. Sorry I have not been creating videos like I used to. Um, I want to start back up doing more videos again. There's plenty of exciting things that I want to do in the coming months. Um, robotics tutorials, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of stuff I want to show you guys, but I just don't um, have a lot of time right now in my personal life. It's kind of... Kind of hectic so um thanks for watching please like comment subscribe and i will see you guys in the next tutorial